Congratulations. You found the one station that plays Ghana's best urban music. Listen to YFM 107.9 Accra, 102.5 Kumasi, and 97.9 in Takarati. My guest today, uh, hey, today, if it doesn't pipe, it will die. Uh, that's, it, that's in my own words. I mean, today we host one of Africa's greatest stage sensations uh, who has used his presence on stage to regale and educate his audience. I mean, his antics on stage has earned him the enviable title, the undisputed master of satire and king of comedy. If you know, you know. He's known by many stage names, including Sergeant Lassisi, uh, my very pe uh, personal favorite, uh, Efias Rebo from Broadway, and uh, to fire brand on, uh, 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 he, you know, on radio to the wide screens. I mean, he's etched his name into our hearts with humorous but thought-provoking. That is the emphasis: thought-provoking stage characters that mirror our social, cultural, or social cultural values and else. Please, with all due respect and all, uh, you know, uh, sense of honor. Join me as we welcome the emancipator of Ghanaian comedy, Kweku Sinti Misa, popularly known as K S M. Making me blush. When he praises and 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 Anna, it's it's definitely deserving. Sir, it's good to have you on here. Thank you. It's great to be here. Welcome to the Wiley the Board series. Um. For this I don't want to spy. cut you, but when I read about who was going to interview me, I said, why hasn't this guy come on my show? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make, make a promise, a promise right? to be on my show. Wow. Very soon. Open invitation, man. <laughs> I, I'm humbled. I mean, I, I grew up, I, I mentioned this earlier, I grew up watching the KSM show. I mean, mm. I never missed mm. an episode of the KSM show. Wow. And so to sit here today and have the opportunity, I mean, this is something I dreamt of. Having the opportunity to talk to you, I mean, to listen to your side of the story. I tell my friends, I watched this man for about seven, eight years yes ask people the questions mm. that were supposed to be asked i mean people share their stories on yeah. your show yeah and today you get to tell your story and who's 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 talking to you <laughs> me right here revo revo from kumasi the Osei chrome boy <laughs> is okay he's right here with us sir before we get into the interview right um one of your biggest fans i mean i personally attested that he's one of your biggest fans because as mm. soon as we mentioned last week that you're coming on here this man has been coming here every single day really he hasn't missed a day he's been coming here every single day and he's quite talented by the way so he decided to come through i mean we decided to allow him talk to you today he has a few words for you oh, but he wow. didn't come alone wow we don't go empty-handed i mean you go with gifts i mean the three wise men went to visit jesus baby jesus and they went with gifts so um he's here i'll just let him introduce himself uh, he has a few words for you and a gift by the way um let's start i'd be glad if you can lift this, this for is, me this is interesting <laughs> yeah. so so my name is stalin ninsen uh, what's the name again stalin ninsen stalin ninsen okay. yes so i run a company called and visual multimedia so, like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, can we just I didn't unwrap it? Can we just unwrap it? I'm not liking this. Can we, can we just unwrap it? I hate suspense. <laughs> wow, oh, it's wrapped. So, goodness. so, so this is yours. I wish my my listeners could see this, man. Oh I'm, my goodness! Listen, guys, we are live on oh, George. Goodness. We're live on Facebook. Why 107.9 FM? Yeah. Yes. Nobody does this in Ghana. Nobody does this in Ghana. This is beautiful. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're live on Facebook, Why 107.9 FM. Uh, on Twitter, Why Little Boss is the hashtag. This uh, is amazing. Yeah, shown to the camera. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long did it take you to do this? Um, like two days. Two days? Yes. yes. That's it? Yeah, two days. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> What? So you can take a picture and then you... Yeah, be painted. You paint it? Paint it. Be painted with a PC first. Bro, well, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. And trust me, people bring me paintings. Uh -huh. they, they do that. They will show up in my office or something, portraits and things. But this, this 
this is beautiful. Amazing. This is the new look. Yeah. <laughs> wow. New face and we thank you so much. much. Yeah. I'm so blessed. I'm so thank blessed. You, thank, so you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and this NV Studios. NV. NV Studios. NV advertising. I don't put anything on it. Oh, there's yeah. nothing on yeah. it. It's all yours. Why? Yeah. It's not mine. <laughs> it's for the legendary. It's for Guys, man, I wish you guys were here. I mean, if you if you want to enjoy what we're enjoying here, kindly get on our Facebook Y179 from the hashtag is still wild in the board series. Wow. If you have questions for Quick Cousin Team Miss KSM, kindly send I'm, it through. I'm so impressed. Thank you. Thank you. And we God bless you so much, all right? Uh, social media handles That's in case it. people I'll want to get in touch with you. I'll find time to visit your studio. Yes. 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 Okay. Exactly. And I take your number and yes. then we'll link up. Yes, that's yeah. And doors. Thank you so And doors. Thank you so and doors. Can, I, can I have you a bit closer? Closer can, to my Can I get a, cl a bit closer? Yes. Yes. This is fine? This is perfect. Okay. Wow. Oh, so that's, a, that's the first surprise for you. I mean, today. Oh, you have more coming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, so so let's let's break it down. Okay. Let's mm. let's go deeper, deeper than deeper. I mean, um, one thing I beg of you is let's be as blunt as possible. I know you're going to do that for us. It's going to be fun, but we need you to go deeper. We need the deeper KSM. You got We're it. Gonna, we've got it, right? You've got it. All that you've sorted. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I mean, give us a give us a brief insight into your childhood i have known you on tv for a while now mm. I, I i mean I, I didn't grow up that time i would have definitely followed you because i mean i've been a fan <laughs> since but then for people who are new to mm. ksm i mean the ones who have known you but known you on screen um, where did you grow up how was growing up like in Kumasi. Yes, and I, and I, and I see you are from Kumasi as well, right? Chrome boys. Uh, yeah. Chrome yeah, yeah, yeah. boy. Then, Quite a sweet boy. Quite a sweet Pepe, Pepe. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I was born in Swami, actually. Wow. At the time I was born, my father was the chaplain for Prompe College. Okay. He was also the first, for Prompe people who are listening, mm -hmm. My father was the first Osset to house master. We used to have oh, wow. house masters, yeah. So as a chaplain, he was a house master, and he taught English language and uh, religious knowledge. Oh, no, no, Bible knowledge, BK. Okay. So that's when I was born. I was born in Kumasi. I was actually born at the time we were living on the campus of Prompa College. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the name? Sofola I ran about. Sofola. <laughs> you got it. Where the market was. I mean, where last did you go there? Uh, when last did you go there? On our 70th anniversary, which was, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting. I was there for our 70th anniversary sometime just last year. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was. You, I you was saw. There. You saw that. You saw the development at the front. I mean, there used yeah. to be a market right yes. in front of yes. the place. Yes. Now they shifted all place. of them. Yes. There's a new interchange over yes. there. I yes. mean, Prempe, I, I love Prempe. Yes. Truth be told, so I picked three schools mm. uh, after senior high school. I picked Upokuari. I picked uh, Prempe College because Prempe was like very close, like five. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, um, fortunately or unfortunately, I got Kumasi Anglican. Well, I mean, it's fortunate now because <laughs> that's what I got. But I always envy them. I mean, I'm in front of my house. house. Yes, yeah, Okay. And these green boys would just be passing and going and yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you people didn't pick me. I hate <laughs> you guys. I mean, so you grew up on campus with all the students around. Actually, I I was born there. Okay. I think I left. We left there when I was maybe two or three years oh, old. Oh, that was so quite early. I don't remember. Maybe a little older, no, a little mm. older, but mm. I don't remember much because I was a very, really little kid then. Mm. I still, when I meet President Kufo, he would tease me. <laughs> now you, I was so, I knew you when you were wearing your diapers. Now look, at, <laughs> <laughs> now look at you, you know. So that was way back. Way back. But my my dad moved from um, Prempe College mm -hmm. to Kuma, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and USD, okay. and he became the chaplain there again. And he was also the headmaster for the KNUC secondary school oh, then. Wow. And of course, he was also lecturing in um, religious knowledge and things like Bible that. Bible knowledge. Yeah. So he became a chaplain. So we moved from public college to KNUSD, you know. That's where I grew up most of the time. So mm. I went to the closest school, uh, KNUSD primary. Okay. That's where I went way wow. back then. I was wow. in Ken USC. That was like school. one of the DB schools in Kumasi back then. <laughs> yeah, DB, like very DB. Anyone who knows Ken USC school, I mean, yeah. I think their uniform was white and then brown down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. Yeah, such a DB school. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, tell us, tell us, tell us how Ghana was like back then. I mean, while you were growing up in Kumasi around that time, how was how was the entertainment scene like? What was what was fun for you guys? What did you guys I do? I guess for fun? at that I mean, time I was such a kid. I was just having your regular fun. Mm. You know, I don't know if you know the black and white. 
candy. Aliwa. Black, uh, my friend, Aliwa. Aliwa. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember going to buy black and white, you know, condensed milk candy. Just having fun. I really didn't, at that time, was not looking at, mm. like, let's, what's happening in Ghana now, mm. you know? What are the in-depth social... Mm. No, 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 no. I was None just of that stuff. You just had your child. Yeah, just had childhood fun, wow. you know, so I didn't see much. I think the one thing that I saw... Mm. Uh, was when in Kumo was overthrown. Okay. Because that was such a, a massive historical thing. Mm -hmm. Being a kid, I didn't know too much, but I remember how happy the jubilation of many, many people mm. and what was happening. Ah, you took Kwame Nkrumah, you know. Mm. And at that point, it didn't really it mean didn't really much mean, mm. to me. But those were some of the earlier memories mm. growing up, growing you up, know, mm. was the 66 coup, you know, and I remember when. Uh, General Kutuka was it Lieutenant Kutuka? I don't know. Uh, him and the Free Fire. Yes. They came to Kumasi during the, you know, to come and pass through, uh, forced to go and watch them and wave. These are things I remember. Mm. I didn't know their historical meaning or yeah, importance, but you grew up. I grew up on those things, you know. Mm. Mm. My earliest memory, though, is uh, singing Kwame Nkrumah. Wow, you, yeah. you, you you saw him? I saw him. The only time I saw Kwame Nkrumah was when he came to KNUST with the Queen. Wow. The Queen was in Ghana, Queen in Elizabeth. Kumasi, to come and open the Queen's Hall. Oh, wow. Henry. Yeah, the Queen. It was that great. So the Queen herself came to. The Queen herself was actually came named after her. With Kwame Nkrumah. Wow. And I remember, because my father was a lecturer then, mm. you know, being there and seeing Kwame Nkrumah, and I'm like, ah, you know, it didn't mean much, but. Looking back and I'm like, yeah, hey, I saw Kwame Kwame and the yeah, Queen yeah. together. They should not see. I'm going to buy a DM. I'm going to buy a DM. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful memories. I mean, let's still talk about you growing up in the home of a moderator of one of the largest churches in Ghana. I mean, mm. um, uh, a lot of eyes must have been on you or your siblings. Uh, you, you, there's a notion. Uh, so for my dear, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say. Uh, was there a lot of pressure to conform to, you know, societal values and norms uh, growing up in a uh, chaplain's house? And I, and I give my father a lot of credit for that, you okay. know, because yeah, we grew up in uh, also for fear, mm -hmm. and like you said, yeah, so for my domain, you was uh, <laughs> so there's so much pressure on you, but fortunately, no, because um, my father was sort of liberal, mm -hmm. and he used to say this, and I always remember, and I think I am also using the same formula for bringing up my children okay. mm -hmm. because my father used to say, You cannot develop your child. Mm. You can only guide, guide your them. child That's to true. develop. You know, so my father's approach was, um, um, well, hands off, let me see what career, mm -hmm. let me see what their passion is, let me see what their talent is, mm -hmm. and as much as possible, let me support them and push them, push them. in the direction they want to go. Mm. Of course, he'll correct you, he will step in when mm -hmm. he had to, mm -hmm. but generally, in terms of career decisions, growing up and things, he, he, he just gave us guidance, but mm -hmm. didn't like want to mold us like mm -hmm. you care, also for, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I'm the Presbyterian Church moderator, mm -hmm. you have to also, go, mm -hmm. I have to have my children getting to the yeah, you somehow. need to be a pastor. Somehow, pastor somehow. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't do that. He just allowed us to express our own strengths. But of course, he gave us the guidance and direction. And one thing that I remember very, very well, Revo. Can I call it Revo? Talk, I like talk to me. <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, I love it. It's Rev with an O. So Rev. Re yeah. Rev. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I call it Rev. No, but it's fine. You can call me Rev. I call, yeah, yeah. Okay. So one thing I remember, remember was. Um, Way back in 1977, mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll get back. I'm jumping ahead of you. No problem. Give me a chance. <laughs> when I staged my first professional play on stage, 1977. 1977. Yes. Wow. Was that 42, 43 years ago? I don't remember. At the then we didn't have the National Theatre, uh -huh. but we had the Art Centre. Mm. And I remember finishing the performance, and everybody was so happy and applauding, and. I saw my father walking down from the aisle. Wow. And he came right up on stage and gave me such a, a bear hug. You know, so but that I mean that's that's what I'm talking that's about. Kind you know, of vibe back in those days, even theater wasn't respected mm -hmm. or something that you encourage your children to go and to do. get into. It. But my father supported us. He would come to the show. Wow. Not only that, but would come and give me a hug on stage. On stage. Yeah. That's so, my boy. Or did you jam? That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> the famous kid. I, I mean, so <clears throat> growing up, what was your what was your dream career? I mean, what did you want to see yourself grow into? A pilot. A pilot. <laughs> Honestly, I would go, the few times I would see pilots in their uniform, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, 
I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to fly a plane. I want to dress like this guy. You know, so that, that, that was what I was thinking mm. growing up, you know. And funny enough, all the time I was thinking that, I had a very, very crazy streak in me, mm. you know. But it didn't occur to me that that is where I was going to end up. I was thinking either a pilot or something. You know, but had a very, very crazy streak in me. For example, uh, Revo, um, I would hear a story, and the minute I heard the story, I would get my my friends together, my sister, Anima, the one I come after. Yes. You know, uh, Anima, uh, well, here's the story. I want you to play this, and I want you to play that. I want you to play this, you know, and I w sort of stage mm. a show for them to perform. I didn't know that was the inkling of a director at a very young age. Wow. Directing a play, but I had to come up with things like that, you know. So I remember I had the laugh of that, you know, the the the, the theater, the mm -hmm. acting, and but that for me that was something. That was on deep the side. inside. It was I just in the corner. The real thing I want to do was a pilot. Was a pilot, and um, I think as you grow, things change. Yes. I wanted to be a pilot, and then later on, when I get when I got to um, back in the day, we had secondary school. We didn't have JSS and SHS. You know? <laughs> <laughs> when I got to secondary school, then it changed. At some mm -hmm. point, I wanted to be a lawyer. Hey. Yeah, the A. <laughs> As I'm changing, I wanted to be a lawyer, uh, so I've, I've been, I've been, a, I wanted to be a pilot. pilot. Before. I wanted to be a lawyer. Doctor, the doctor come up. No, in doctor before. didn't come. Doctor up. wasn't in there. T a, a teacher. Hey, <laughs> why? I, I, I don't know. I just thought I would be teaching, uh, not just a teacher, specifically political science. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go to university and teach political, political science. science. For what reason, I don't know. Wow. You know, so it's been up and down, up and down, up and down. But all this time, the actual career I was nursing was for stage. Mm. And I wasn't even paying attention. And to nobody that. actually taught you that. I mean, it's something deep within. It's an yeah. interest. It's a passion that yeah. just springs up bit by bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Um, one funny thing, uh, well, I'm relating to this very well, but mm. it's funny. Mine is very funny. <laughs> so you see how at uh, every single point in time in your life, you had one particular mm -hmm. career dream. Initially, I wanted to be a doctor. Oh, you wanted to be a doctor? Yes. And then <laughs> along the line, I realized physics and biology wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, free. Yes, I had to bring it down a little bit. I realized, okay, I'm very good in economics. In Maybe we'll do banking. Uh, I would want to be a bank manager. <laughs> and then I realized, Charlie, accounting and balancing yeah. sheets aren't easy. So what if I become a political science lecturer? Because I'm very good with wow. political science as well. Wow. And then along the line, I realized, okay, those things are the basics for being a lawyer. So maybe I might want to be a lawyer. Oh, yeah. wow. And through all these, well, uh, these I mean, on, through this journey, there was this little interest I had. I mean, I didn't know it would be this big. Mm. But same way you had interest in the creatives. I had a vibe. I mean, something that had to do with journalism, something that had to do with presenting. Wow. But it was, I mean, it was hidden because, mm -hmm. I mean, you look around you and nobody else is really doing it. And so you're like, okay, let me just keep this on, on the side. Maybe it's something that I'm just feeling. So let me just focus on what I can do. Until you realize, no, this is actually what you were meant this to do. Exactly. I, I really connect to this. And mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of people mm -hmm. out there listening who can connect to this as well. From Kumasi, Pris, uh, Kumasi to Presec and then back to Pempe again. Uh, two giants then now. Uh, how different were these two school environments for you and what did each uh, impart to you, KSM? Oh, Presec, Presec, Presec. I still call myself Odadie, Odadie. even though I went to Presec for just one year. Mm. But that was my first year in secondary school. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my first year in a boarding situation boarding. Okay. where I was dropped off and left off and I was mm -hmm. by myself, you know. So Presec gave me, gives me those memories, you know. Uh, uh, so I enjoyed my first year at Presec, you know. Back in the days, we had the homoing. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were, I didn't experience that. Didn't experience that. Experience. No, no, no. Well, I, was I think it was my year that they decided somebody oh, well, got somebody, a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah, traumatic. Yeah. So I think they, they made a law that mm -hmm. we we're going to end hom mm -hmm. homoing and things like that. But I went through it a bit, you know. I remember our first year in Presec, they had to dress us like clowns. <laughs> that was the initiation of from one people. Yeah. And then we sing a song. I still remember the song. Do you want to hear it? Let's sing it. Let's go. It's um, uh, uh, we were called Ninos because we were in from one. Okay. Nino is an elephant, the, the biggest, biggest of all creation. <laughs> Thousand balls of Kenge Nino. Ah, so I think you know. I've heard this. I've heard this. I've heard this. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be marching up and down the school at night, you know, on oh. our orientation and things like that. So Presec, I have fond memories of Presec, mm. but I, after one year. 
I don't know why I felt I should be further from home. Mm -hmm. You know, Prosec was just in Accra and very, very close to uh, where we were living. Yeah. Then, when my father was moderator, so I decided, uh, okay, I want to go far. And my father haven't been, um, what you call it? Uh, from a house master. House master yeah. from Bacology, and then the, the headmaster, T.O. Sign, were very, very close. Mm. So I think. With just a phone call, my son wants to come there. <laughs> Connection. <laughs> well, let him come. <laughs> wow. So, so I switched to Prempe, yeah. But both are really, really great schools. Of course, I spent more time at Prempe. How many years were, were, were these apart? I mean, you, you being in Kumasi, staying on Kenya University campus, and then coming to Accra, going to Presec, and then coming back. I mean, how many years did you spend in Accra? Well, we moved, we, we, my mother and father became moderator. We all moved to Accra. So we're living in Accra. I must have been in Accra for maybe six years or so mm. before I went to Presec for one year and then decided to go to Kumasi. Did, did you connect with your friends when you went back? To? When you went back to Kumasi? No. Not really? there's, there's been, and Kumasi too, we're staying on campus at Tech. Okay, so you didn't really Yeah, go so out, I didn't really out. get the network. Mm. Yeah. Did, so. did you have any any classmates that are, uh, excuse me, say quite notable now, I mean, apart from you? From Tech? Any, no, uh, Presec and Prempe College. Um, I have very, very, uh, what do you call it, little memory of my mates at Presec. Okay. But from the college, yeah. From the college, yeah. I, 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 I have uh, a few very, very good outstanding alumni that are out mm. there. Regarding my mates, uh, what's his name? Charles Asari, who was at the airport. Okay. Yeah. When I was entertainment prefect, he was my assistant. You were entertainment prefect? I was entertainment prefect. Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> were you appointed? Were you voted into that? No, appointed. Appointed? Mm. Wow, because of your creative skills. Because of the creative skills, yeah. T tell us the, 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 the style of entertainment back then. I mean, entertainment prefect, your your nights were the entertainment nights. W what was the what was a variety, a typical variety night variety for you? Variety night was... Uh, People will come and do a talent display, either they sing or they dance or anything creative, you know. We call that, uh, what do we call that? I don't know, uh, talent night. Yeah. You know, then we have uh, movie nights where we'll arrange and screen a movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we had boxing. Boxing night? Yeah. We actually put up a ring and we have gloves, you know, so we had boxing. And who were the boxers? Well, people who are settled, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and this is wicked. Are, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Yeah, but we had a good, uh, the sports master was the referee, so we made sure it didn't go out of control. So this was not illegal? No, 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 no. It was done nicely as entertainment night, you know. And we had music night, uh -huh. where we just meet and play music and people dance. People dance, link up with you the know. Then we had TV night. Wow. Can you believe we put a screen, one TV screen, on the stage and the whole the whole school just yeah. well, was watching TV. You know, we had things like this for entertainment. Most most parents, especially then, would want their awards to study for a white collar job. But you found yourself in a film school, Nafti. Um, did you have to convince them? I mean, you mentioned that they were super supportive of your career and, and that. But then, w were there any form of you know convincing, like, mommy, I really want to do this. Maybe you guys have plans for me, but this is what I want to do. Uh, how, how was how was that period like for you? No, I mean, before actually, you moved to um, 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 when I finished uh, sixth form, I, I, I failed miserably, man. My A you, you results was a disaster. <laughs> wow, <laughs> my level results was a disaster, man. So I had to take back and sit home another one year to redo some of these mm -hmm, papers, mm -hmm. you know. So I thought I've gone through that, then I read somewhere that there was an opening that uh, NAFTI was starting, you know. So we were the first, we were the pioneers of NAFTI. Wow. And so when I read about, they learn film, they learn editing, they learn direct, all this stuff, they are all part of the creative stuff anyway. So I was like, wow, I don't think I mind this, you know. I, I don't mind going to NAFTI. Mm -hmm. And so I think I took an interest in that and applied, you know, and things went so well with my application, with my interviews and everything, I decided I was going to NAFTI. So guess what, I still don't know what the results were, even though I restart the A-level. 
I, so in, in the course of you waiting for the results, the results the, I went to NAFTI. You went to NAFTI. Yeah. After NAFTI, you could have set out to you know work uh, in the film industry back then. I mean, which was way better. But you decided to um, take it a notch higher by pursuing a master's degree yeah. in fine arts and the funny abroad. Thing, it wasn't like after NAFTI. I didn't finish NAFTI either. You, did, you didn't finish NAFTI no, either? No, I left. I went to NAFTI for one year. And during that one year, I started my performances. Mm -hmm. There was a show that they called Mellow Madness. Mm -hmm. And it was just me playing seven characters. I think wow. Pink is one of the most intensive shows I've ever done in my life. Because I wasn't just playing the characters like on stage, changing my voice or anything. Mm -hmm. I would go backstage, come on come as, on, a, different as person. a different person. And I'll change language, I'll change scripts, uh, script, tone, you know, everything. Yeah. So Looks. That, 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 that play was really, really popular. And at one time, the US Embassy, I think it's July 4th, is the Independence, Independence Day, yes, yeah. July 4th, yeah. So I knew the coach attache. Mm. So the coach attache, his name is Richard Overtiff. Okay. Then, then. Well, he's still called Richard Overtiff, but I knew him then. He says, hey, Quaiko, you know, <laughs> <laughs> come over to the US eyes and give us a performance of the show. Yeah, come to see the show at the Art Center. Okay. So he, he sort of encouraged me to perform at uh, the US Information Center wow. back in the day. You know, for the diplomats and uh -huh. the U.S. staff and mm -hmm. everything, and they loved it. Wow! Guess what? He was the guy that told me, "I think you should go to the U.S. and do some studies in acting and script. Take this further, basically." So, Revo, my first visa to the U.S. I didn't go for an interview. Hey, Richard Overtev waived it. At that time, I don't know if they still do it. But I mean, there are waivers in yeah, they were special waivers. situations. So, so he yeah. just wrote a, a note for me to take to the embassy. That means you were that big. Well, I was that respected, I guess. But the show was that big, mm. Mellow Madness. Mm. And so um, I'm, I'm mixing things up. Mm. So it was at the same time that I was just finishing of my first year at Nafti. Mm -hmm. And then I got this opportunity to go and sit in the States. And I got a visa because the... The culture of the Sheikh had give me, given me waiver to just go and get my visa. Now I have to say something here. There was one guy that I went to Pumba College with. His name mm -hmm. is Maxwell Iduse. And if he's listening, Maxwell was the guy who was encouraging me because he went to school there. Okay. And he always wanted me to come there. Oh, wow. You know. So he had me apply, helped me apply. And so I'd gotten an admission. And they had given me scholarship. All I needed was a visa to go there. Richard Overtev waived it for me. So that's how I ended up in the U.S. after NAFTI, you know. So I didn't really finish the full. After one year, I left from NAFTI and went to study my undergraduate in theatre. So after <laughs> NAFTI trained you, yeah, <laughs> and you became popular, yes, and mellow madness was the thing, yeah. You had an opportunity to travel, and then you just left them. And I left NAFTI. But guess what? Tell me. When I came back, after many years. When I came back, to, when I moved back mm -hmm. to Ghana, 1996, I think, Revo, my first stop was Nafti. Wow. And I said, listen, I am here. I love everything I've been through with Nafti. I'm now back from the U.S. Mm -hmm. with my master's mm -hmm. in filming. Mm -hmm. And I love to teach here mm -hmm. for free. You thought for free? No, that's the offer I made them. That's the offer you made them. I'm still waiting. Maybe they'll come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I think they didn't like the fact that you left them. I, mean, I don't know. Something. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but they, yeah. they all looked excited. I until don't until, they, until they went back to the records and, oh, is this the same Kweku Sinti Miss Adali? Uh, maybe he's the one that don't allow him. Don't let him, let him come out. back. Don't let him come back. Don't let him come back. <laughs> but I was making up for leaving them like that. Wow. You know? So, yeah, I went and I offered to teach for free. And uh, now that I'm almost retired, if they bring the offer, I'll probably be my retirement thing i always anyway so yeah i did i did try to go back to that i, I want to find out all right your days in america mm -hmm. i mean this was your first time living ghana mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you were did you have family members there people you lived with I mean, tell, tell me how tell me your first day you landed in america tell me the experience beautiful the first day i landed in america uh at the jfk airport it was just stunning mm. you know you know how you dream about something oh. so well <laughs> And then you get there. And it's here. It's here. I mean, the U.S., it was a, quite an amazing, almost surreal mm. experience. Mm. And I had met a friend of mine on the plane mm. for the first time 
one guy called George Amwa, who was also going for the first time, but he had family in New York. So when we arrived at JFK, I had to continue and go to Connecticut where my school was. Okay. And he says, oh, let's spend the night with me so we can, you know, be with my friends here, my family. So I spent the first night at, in New York City with uh, George Amwa okay. in, in their place. And I was like, wow, you know, um, there was a, a, a guy there who had been in acting. And you know, Ghana, you know, mm. New York and acting mm -hmm, is like, mm -hmm. you know, so this guy, I mentioned that I want to come and do theater. I was doing a bit of in Ghana. This guy got excited. Wow. You know, oh, acting is this. He was talking about what is film. Do you know Dustin Hoffman? Do you know Jack Nicholson? <laughs> 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 he was wow. so uh, excited that I was coming yeah, from Ghana yeah, yeah. to the U.S. to do acting. So we became buddies right there, cool. you know. So that was my first night in, um, you know, until I flew to Hartford. And then I realized, you know, Hartford was a little slower, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. quieter. Less you know, populated. Less populated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my friend Maxwell, mm -hmm. you know, he came to meet me. Oh, and your bugger friend. My, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> wow. He's in Ghana right now. He's been stuck by the shutdown of the airport. Did you enjoy your stay in America? Oh, I had amazing experiences. Mm. I enjoyed plenty. I went through some horror. Wow. I remember when I used to sleep on the train. You used to sleep on the train? I slept on the train because they had evicted me, Revo. I came home from NYU, wow. went to my, my apartment, and then there was an eviction notice. Of course, it was locked. You know. Because you couldn't pay your hostel fees? I was so late on rent, and I kept promising. Wow. Nah, the thing too wasn't flowing. So that evening, because I got home late, it was locked. I didn't know who to go to. Hmm. So the only thing I could think is, okay, go and spend the night on the train, you know. So my, 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 my station was called Avenue H. And when you take the train there, it goes all the way for those people who under, you know mm -hmm. the distance to the mm -hmm. Bronx, the last stop in Bronx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then comes back. Goes through the Grand Concourse. Grand, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mosholu, yes. all the way to yes. the end. You got it. Wow. So I just will go and pay, stay on the train, sleep. So it take me all the way to the end. And then come back. Wow. So I remember days like this, man. And uh, sometimes I'm like, hey, let me that train move. <laughs> wow, you, you actually slept on a train. I slept on the train. That, the, you and know, I mean, I couldn't. People should get it right. I'm not sure you slept on uh, on uh, what's the name, <laughs> the Amtrak. You no, slept, no, 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 no. You slept Amtrak, on the one, two, and three train. Subway. It's hard. just a seat. It's the hard seat. Thank you. Thank My you. My God. It wasn't an Amtrak train. It was hard. You know, so these are some of the things that I went through. I'm like, wow, you play for beam, you know. And I remember finishing uh, New York, and um, I'm proud to say, I did a, I did two majors, mm -hmm. you know, in three years. Normally, it's a four-year course to get your major, undergraduate, you know, four-year course. I decided I'd do a double major, so I have a degree in um, theater and a degree in communications. Wow. And I decided to do a double major. So one was not like major and the other it one was minor. minor. There were two majors. And incidentally, I did it in three years. Instead of four. Instead of four. I'm saying this to make a point, you know. And I thought this was the most amazing feat to be accomplished. Mm. And Revo, after that, let me near you. <laughs> <laughs> I would interview and I was flopping left, right, center. I said, hey, bring your book guys with me a minute. I have a, yeah. have a double major. And I did it in three years. Three years. About that. I didn't do it in four years. No. And still you are not getting a job. <laughs> but but then again, I started understanding why mm. I wasn't getting a job. It's very, very easy to say, so you're in America, it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's racism, you know, because I'm black. Mm -hmm. It's easy because that happens. But I realized that no. I had no idea that interviewing for a job in itself was an art. Mm -hmm. There was a strategy to it. Mm. You know, I had no idea how to put your re your CV together mm. and let it breathe. Mm. I just think you put everything put down. Put life to it. Yes. So after several failures of not getting a job, mm -hmm. in the meantime, because I wasn't getting the job that I wanted, mm -hmm. let me clarify it. I had to do other jobs like Nami Chinkoko KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Wow. I worked there as a, you know, I was frying chicken and Charlie, you, you can't mean me. This is a you chef along me. the line. I mean. <laughs> Wasn't there be a chef? <laughs> you, were, you were just frying it. Just fry. 
A chef there, you know, to do you know, many uh, things. Yours yeah. just make sure it's fried. Yes. To this level, and to then bring level, it back. You know, mm. so I had to work for Kentucky Fried Chicken, frying chicken. I had to work as a, uh, what do you call it, um, parking lot attendant mm. at the Hilton Hotel in Hartford. You know, people parking and then me giving them the tickets. tickets. <laughs> Wow. I had to do valet. You know, so I'm just saying all of these things that when you're going through, you think God is not on your side. You mm. think you're suffering. But no, they're just amazing opportunities to learn mm. and to improve. You know, I wrote a book called um, uh, Unlocking the Job Market, okay. which was like one of the biggest selling books in Ghana. And how to craft your CV, interview skills and everything. Bravo, how did that amazing. land this? All the time I couldn't get a job in the, in, US. in the US. And I was reading and I was preparing. I was learning. Wow. You know, but during those times I could have sons that let me fear in your crowd. Mm -hmm. You could have two given degrees, up. I could have sons in me fear in your <laughs> that which means that I yeah. Oh, I, so I I know how hard that is because I you know, a lot of the the guys that know me, well, people who know me very well. I also went to Ligon, did mm -hmm. a combined major. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you're doing one minor, one, one major. Yeah, like it's, it's a combi hard. Yeah, it's like tedious. A combined major. Yes, combined yeah. major. Everything is on the same level. If you're yes. doing uh, exams for this, you're doing exams That's for that right. same yes. volume. Yes. Heaven is just that it's two different things. So I mean to go through all that and yeah. come out and you're not finding a job. I, the average person will be frustrated. Yeah. I mean, frustration will definitely set yeah. in. And that is when you start looking at options that are less. But you didn't do none of that. I mean, you just had to do things, make shift things to keep you going on. To keep you me going, that. yes. Yes, yes. Wow. You were the first African to stage on original off-Broadway play with thoughts of a confused black man. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be kind enough to tell us how, uh, you know, it materialized and what made it such a huge hit? Okay, thank you. What's that? I could see. I could take my background. You have to do form. You have to do form. Yes, uh, I did a show called Thoughts of a Confused Black Man. Mm. And when I started the show, I started from a very dingy old theater in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. You know. By the way, those of you, let me explain. When we say off Broadway, uh, the main place you want to be is Broadway. Broadway. That's the highest. Mm. On Broadway too is great. It means that from there you have your foot in Broadway. Yes. You know. So um, anyway, I just started off Broadway. I started in a dingy theater in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and this show was called Thoughts of a Confused Black Man, and the show was about an African mm -hmm. who had gone to America, mm -hmm. had had interactions with African Americans, the Black Americans, mm -hmm. and had realized that there was something similar between the two of them. You know, the African-American, they went through slavery mm -hmm. to get to where they are. The African went through colonialism to get to where he is. Mm -hmm. But in the show, I was looking at the impact of impact. slavery and colonialism and, yeah. on the African, on the black the person. The confusion they put on Confusion. Mm -hmm. And they was almost all the same. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that triggered thoughts of a confused black man, mm -hmm. which I did. And the first time I performed it was in a church. There was church. This, yeah, there was this radical uh, pastor called Reverend Daughtry. He had a church in Brooklyn called House of House of the Lord Church, and he had a little stage theater there, you know, sitting about fifty people. I don't 50 know. People, yeah, yeah. So when I finished the show, I said, well, "Let me try it out." So Daughtry gave me his space uh -huh. to do thoughts of a confused black man, and the reaction mm, mm, mm. of the church. I said, "Chale, mm, I've got something. It's time to move this." Wow. You know, so I moved it from House of the Lord Church to the dingy theater I was talking about on 23rd mm -hmm. Street in mm -hmm. Manhattan. This place was so bad that on the night of performance, I have to make sure I get there with some good Ghanaian friends to go and clean the toilets, get toilet roll. I have to buy my own lights for the stage lights. That's mm -hmm. how bad the theater That's was. That's how bad it was. Yeah. But let me tell you one of the best stories in my life. One evening, it had really snowed. It was very, very cold. Mm. Right? The theater sell the theater seats about just 150 people it's not a big theater it's not the biggest one yeah so this cold night i was backstage you know preparing and then the stage manager came and said that they didn't call me uh, ks and then it was just kweku you know it came and told me kweku there's 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 only two people out there <clears throat> and they say because it's so cold and because it's only them if I decide that I want to cancel, they are okay. Wow. They will take their money and go. And go. 
Then Rev. Boaz said, no, the show must go on. They have come through the cold to come to see the show. Why am I going to let them go? Mm -hmm. I will perform. So you perform for two people? I perform for two people, Revo. And I'm not kidding, it's probably one of the best performances I've ever done. Why so? Because, because they were so engaged in what I was saying. You could they were to laughing, uh -huh. they were applauding, they were really intense and I could feel their energy on stage. Mm. And it was amazing, you know. But guess what, after the show, uh, they came to tell me that they are still at the theater and uh, they said they want to see me before they, they go. Wow. Well, so I go to see them, I'm talking to them, and then one guy says, oh, by the way, I'm Tony Andresakis. And Revo, anybody who knows anything in theater then would know Tony Andresakis. He was a big shot. Big shot! So I was like stammering. Tony Andresakis. Is this the phone for you? Is this you? He said, yes. Wow. He said the show was marvelous. And then told me that he has some movie from this dingy theater that's the way to use it. i'm using the word because i borrowed it from him he says oh, we have to move this thing from this dingy place mm. you know so guess what he was the one that moved the show from the 23rd street little theater on in manhattan in manhattan to off broadway it was wow. called the Mesa theater which was off broadway he was the one that financed everything and moved the show off broadway and that's when the show took off and so imagine you had said because there are only two people I won't perform. Thank you. You would have missed such an Thank opportunity. You. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. And they Inspiring. offered. They offered mm -hmm. that. You didn't even ask for it. Pardon? You didn't even ask for it. It was offered. No, 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 no. All I said, no, no. I said the show must go on. If they come through the court to see it, I don't care if there's only one person. May <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And so he moved the show from uh, off Broadway and took. No, no, sorry. From that dingy. Theater, which would have been off, 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 mm -hmm. off, 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 maybe a hundred off Broadways mm -hmm. to off Broadway, Mesa Theatre, and I'll never like forget. This it. close to Broadway. This close to Broadway. Yeah. This close to Broadway. Wow. But again, again, I messed up again. You did? Yeah, I messed up big time. Because some guy came to see the show off Broadway and thought it was fantastic. And Revo promised me he was going to take it to Broadway. Oh, wow. And the biggest mistake I had made in my life up to that point, and even still, was that I agreed and signed a contract with them because I wanted to get to Broadway. And him in there. <laughs> it didn't happen. Wow. It didn't happen. All he wanted to do, by the way, was to just take the rights of the play from me. Mm -hmm because I was so crazy. Exactly. And let me advise people to never sign a contract until you have a lawyer review it who understands what you're signing. Mm. Because from what he explained to me and the contract I signed were two different were things. Were two different things. But he care. Oh, where do I sign? Would you only be called Broadway? I mean, the offer sounded good. No, it sounded terrific. So I didn't know I signed away my life. I signed away the rights to the play. He had the right to decide uh, 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 you what know, what happens to yes. it? Yeah, and who plays it? Yes, and apparently he had lined up some actors for that for that role. Wow! He was going to audition some whole new set of actors and put them on stage. But I don't know what to say. God being good or the world being mysterious, wow. nobody could audition and deliver the show like I did. Mm. I hear he auditioned over seventy-five people, and he wasn't happy with any of them. But then again, I had lost rights to the play. Mm -hmm. Because I signed, you it, signed away. it You signed it away. Yeah, I was going to Broadway. Was there money involved? When I signed? Yes. Yeah, he gave me some Afro consideration thing. Mm -hmm. But the money I was looking for was the, the Broadway one, yeah. kind of cash, not the, the big cake. The big cake, not the knock of you I got up on signing. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I think he really was it could this, have been bigger. This might have been a big blow to you. Yeah. Personally. Oh massa. This was the biggest blow and I didn't even know how I was so sad I was so confused I was so I was going through such emotions because it's like that's all I could do my whole life was thoughts of a confused black man yes it got reviews in the village voice which is a very outstanding paper one Dan Friedman who was reviewing the show then said this is equivalent to any great Broadway play mm -hmm. he has seen you know, mm -hmm. so can you imagine selling it off and then getting to realize that you can't even perform you can't the play? Even, yeah. Your own work. My own work. I was crushed. 
you and confused. I was going to take you very black, much. <laughs> a confused black man. Revo, I was a confused black man yes, then. then. <laughs> you know? Would, would this by any chance account to the reason why you left America and returned to Ghana? Revo, what been? And then one year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just said, mm. uh, it degassed me, you know. Mm. It degassed me. And right about then, I think the film, the film uh, industry was sort of picking up in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And you know how you meet people and they can give you a poor like mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. you know. So this guy met me and he says, no, but, but you cry, can I say, you have your masters in film? And by the way, uh, I was able to get some very good experience in mm -hmm. film too. You know, thanks to one guy called Gil Noble, who was a producer and uh, an executive producer on uh, ABC TV. Okay. He actually commissioned me to do a screenplay mm. for one African congressman called Adam Clayton Powell. Okay. Great. And at the time, you know, uh, for the screenplay, I think at the time, Charlie, somebody was suffering and hustling around. They made me a lot of $25,000. You were good. Hey! You were sorted. Sorted. Thank you for the word. <laughs> I was sorted. You know, so I went through that, you know, so I thought I had, you know, gone somewhere now without experience and everything. Maybe when I met this guy from Ghana who said, Charlie, the film industry is booming and it's about to take off and this is the time that you should use your experience and everything. Go back home. Da -da 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 I say, bingo. You got it on the money. So that's when I decided that I'll come home, you know, and, and get to, to the film industry and and, and, and do take over. Take over. <laughs> and so that's, thank you. And, and you remember the first day you came back? Yes. How it was like, what did you do when you got back? The first day, first the, day. The first, first day. day, I went to my sister's house in Dansuma okay. to eat Banku. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were, you were getting it in America. <laughs> I was getting it, but there's nothing like my sister's yeah, own. That, 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 you know, no, no, it wasn't Banku, it was Fufu. Oh, that's so much. Okay, okay. No, I was getting there, you know, but when I was coming to Ghana, that was the one of the best thing, uh, things I was thinking about, how I'll go to that summer and have my first fufu and things. So, so coming to Ghana was good, you know, I was like really energized to come. And when I was leaving the U.S., I did one sh film called Wages of Sin. I invited my sister there, there, we did this film. So I was going to come to Ghana to launch the Wages of Sin, and that was going to be my introduction to Ghana film industry. And, and and so that's why I came back. But it didn't quite work out that way, but... <laughs> and... I, I don't want to make myself, make myself say you. I need technical use with you if I want to. No, but we, we are, we're, even, we're not even halfway through. <laughs> this is more real experience I'm talking, how I was real to, I mean, come with Vienna. These are, these are so expensive be stories. I mean, <laughs> I remember this very well, mm -hmm. personally, because, I mean, when I started watching the KSN show, mm -hmm. there were times you would talk about it. I mean, there were excerpts from the very uh, many stage mm -hmm. uh, editions you did of this. The return of, uh, the saga of the returnee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was your first foray into Tiafa in Ghana. Yes. Um, this play mainly um, highlighted um, some of your frustrations with the system. I mean, just how really frustrating was it for you upon returning to the motherland? I mean, you had been away for a while. You came back to Ghana, mm -hmm. system sing, Ufa mm Haya -hmm. CSC, Udra and Abosu, Kakram Babosu. How frustrating were these times for you? I mean, what were the particular things that inspired you to put out such a great, you know, piece? Revo, I wish I could line up all the things that inspired me da, 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 da. but honestly what inspired me was that i took a bet with my wife okay because you know when i came back to ghana i, I got into radio something we may talk about later and so i was so involved in radio one time my wife called me and said do you know now all you do is make noise on radio i don't even think you know how to do a play on stage anymore i'm saying what do you mean you never lose that mm. So it was like an argument between me and my wife, <laughs> and she sort of dared me, okay, prove it. Mm. So the saga of the retainee was written in reaction to a bet I had with my wife. She's called Mavis now, if she's listening. <laughs> I'm sure she's listening. Auntie Mavis, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so improving to Auntie Mavis, I'm calling her Auntie Mavis too, improving to her that I still got it, I came up with the saga of the retainee. You know, and I just decided since I've returned from America and I've had so many frustrations up and down, let me concise all of that into a, a one-man play. 
call the sack of the retinue and perform it. And I did the performance and it just blew, blew yeah. everything. So she is responsible and it came out of a bet with my wife, mm. the saga. And once I did the saga and the reaction was so good and people would just love the saga, I just said, okay, man, let's continue. <laughs> you know, so then I came up with Politically Incorrect. Then I came up with the Fiesta Boy that killed us. Which is my favorite. Yeah, your favorite is the Fiesta Boy. It killed me. I mean, it killed me. Yeah. The accent and the, the mm -hmm. tone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew it was him. I'm like, oh, was him. But I mean, we're switching the Kakrama. You mentioned radio. I mean, let's let's just go on that before we move on to the next one. Um, you established yourself as a fire brand in the late '90s, of course, with a non a no holds barrier or bad or no holds bad sorry uh, approach to dealing with national issues i mm. mean never held back mm -hmm. when it came to addressing the issues that you addressed back then on your show um some some argued you you sort softened up with time mm. I mean, people who knew you back then <laughs> are saying you are like a cooler version of yourself did you give up at a point <laughs> um, were you pressured to give that up or you just decided to adjust the system or basically you you, you decided to uh, grow into a different form very 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 powerful question indeed i'm trying to figure out how i approach it um yeah people say they say they want you hey talk shop days you know i was a firebrand as you put it you know what i realized though after being on there several years is that the approach i was using i had a different notion of how effective it would be yeah I was, I was, this retelling was going to change Ghana. I was going to change Ghana and I was going to transform Ghana. Giddy, 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 giddy. We're going to radicalize you thinking everything, you know. Then I realized that is not the approach. You don't change things by trying to force change. Just put your ideas out. Like you have grown a seed. Let it stay there. It will germinate. It will grow and things gradually will, will change. So I didn't exactly tone down like to say the, you know, but it was like, let me change the approach, you know. So like you said earlier when you were introducing me, you said I was doing top provoking plays. Mm -hmm. Even though I was not on the radio doing the hardcore yeah. political commentary, when you look at the cycle of the retaining, I talked about the same thing. Yeah. Our psyche, our thinking, what needs to change. So I just didn't like tone down. I just changed the, the, the model. And it's very, very interesting, Revo. Like, I just met you and you are telling me whatever influence yeah, yeah. I think I've had on you. And I'm like, oh, really? You know, and I mean, many people like that. Yes. Even now on radio, some of the most dynamic guys on radio will meet me and tell me, oh, we're listening to you. Yes. You know, so I realize you don't force the change, you put it out there. It will inspire people to do things that they want to do. And so, no, I didn't tone down. I'm still very, very, very vocal. You know, when I drop a few things on Twitter, people are like, hey, yeah, you see what guys are doing? So, I went to Musi. I went to Musi. Wow. You know, you I mean, know. so back then, if Twitter, if we had Twitter back then, it would have been dangerous. That, it would have been dangerous. Wow. You know, but Twitter is very dangerous. Of course, now I'm not on <laughs> any mobile. I'm just sitting it's, in my room. It's very addictive. And I put some few things down I mean, there. I the fact that you can just sit there uh, uh, with just 180 characters and throw your mind out there. Yes. And leave people thinking. And leave people you. thinking. I mean, you just tweet and then you leave, come yeah. back and get a lot of reactions. Yeah. Wow, super impressive. <laughs> now, you, your most hilarious character, of course, my personal favorite, um, you know, on stage has been a fiasco mm -hmm. Um, What went into this characterization and what were you trying to impart to Ghanaians with, you know, her character beyond the humor? I, 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 don't, I don't know your sister, your big sister, but I have a feeling mm. she was the one you were, I mean. No, interestingly, no? as a creative, you always have to think of new ways okay. of doing things. Okay. You know, so in my own review of my performances, mm. there's one point that I was thinking, oh, they come and see KSM, mm -hmm. I'm playing La CC, I'm playing, it's still, this, it's still mm -hmm. me. What can I throw out there as a character mm. that would be a little different from what from they've seen what, all this yeah. time? And then sometimes, some, somehow it just occurred to me, why don't you play a woman? I'm like, oh, wow, that'll be exciting. You know, so that was the first thing. Mm -hmm. I just decided just to change what I do exactly. on stage. Let me play a woman. And by the way, I was looking for a name for the woman, and I decided a fear because my mother is called a fear. Okay. But my mother is very gentle, you know, and she's called a fear for you. Mm -hmm. I said a fear for you. I can't imagine 
I need that a, 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 a fierce name. character. Fierce character. Uh -huh. And Sip one, you can't beat the name no. Sip <laughs> when it comes to. Laughing <laughs> Stone. Laughing Stone. Thank you. So I just said, okay, wow. she's called a fierce Sibor. And then, bam. It went. And it, like you said, it's the most hilarious. I, loved it. I, loved I think it. she was my biggest hit. It was the only show I did that my performance was on a Saturday. I had on Thursday that my tickets were sold out. Before? Before. Wow. A fierce war. So. Kudos on that. I mean, it's it's been years <laughs> since you know you brought up this character, but I feel, I mean, the impact is still being felt yeah. up to date. I mean, you did a good job with that. Congrats on that. Thank S you. So far, Ghana is still doing very well. Mm. Um, uh, well, after almost two decades in the art space, uh, what has been the main pillar of uh, you know its process and uh, progress, I should say, and any lessons you've learned since you know you set up Sapphire? Well, I think one of my secrets of my success. And it's good I'm mentioning it here mm -hmm. on YFM because I work with the youth a lot. Mm. You know, if you see my director right now, young guy, your age, mm -hmm. you know, my the producer, mm. possibly even younger. Um, I, I just work with younger brains mm. because I, I see that they have the energy, mm. they have the enthusiasm, you know. And so me, I'm laid back like Olu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the background, you watch it, and I'm in direct uh. And then they are learning. Mm. You know, right now, I can confidently say my Richard, uh, my, my director, Richard Boa, I think is one of the best. In Ghana. And please don't go and push him because you heard me say this, so he won't come. HR, HR, you heard it, right? You know, he's learned. Mm. He's, there was a point that every time before a show comes out, I have to watch what he has edited. And I'll give him my corrections here and there. Now, we do a show, mm -hmm. I just wait till Friday to see the show because I mm. know he's got a down plan. Mm. So that's the, what I'm talking about, you know. So all these years, you know, people that have been at the helm of Safa mm -hmm. are more the younger brains, mm -hmm. very dynamic. And maybe that's why it always feels young and refreshing and, fresh, and yes. dynamic. You know. Although it's still you in there. I mean, oh, you yes, are, yes, yes, I, I, I sometimes yes, say yes. he's KSM of all ages. <laughs> I mean, KSM for the young, for the young at heart, KSM for the old, yes. for the matured, for yes. the yes. for the in-betweens. Yes. I mean, all of us who are in there, for the Gans, for the George. <laughs> I mean, everyone has a little bit of something they can get mm -hmm. from KSM. Mm. We, we've talked so much about the Korea KSM, the, the American Boga KSM, the Returnee KSM. <laughs> Let's speak about the family KSM. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about your family. Mm -hmm. um, I understand you have four children. Um, how's your relationship like with them? Mm. I actually have five, you know, and um, I'm using the same formula that uh, my dad used, you mm -hmm. know. I have looked at their strengths and their passions and everything, and I'm guiding them. Mm -hmm. I'm guiding them, you know. So now they are, they are all doing very, very great uh, Incidentally, all of them happen to be outside Ghana now, which is a bit sad, but they are working there. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one is working with a, with an IT firm mm -hmm. and they do startups mm -hmm. and they guide you digital, digital thing. You know, uh, the second one is a, a medical doctor. With wow. a, yeah. And then um, the third one is into child development, you know, mm -hmm. special development for kids. Um, then there's one who was with me at Safa here, but he's now moved back. And then the fourth one is, um, what's his face? Uh, the, black po way. the popular one? <laughs> the popular black the famous way. one? Yeah, famous black yeah. one. <laughs> he's done a lot of good works. Yeah, I mean, black I was recently, good, yes. I was recently reading a, uh, I think it was a feature on him on one of the websites. I think I read it on um, GQ or... Mm -hmm. I've forgotten the side, but I mean, he's doing so much for himself yes. when it comes to music. And a lot of people don't really know that is your son. That's my I mean, son. That's my last one. Wow. <laughs> you know, you did a good job. Of course, and a, a great wife who I'm happy mm. to have had because you know how I say you can only guide a child to develop. Mm -hmm. I think my biggest weakness was this there's a time in your life for your children, they need a father. Mm. They need that fear. Mm. They need that control. And then later on, once you've molded them, then they become your friends. Mm -hmm. And then they, they hang out with you. I think my parental error was that I was hanging out with them too long. Too long. I never really came out. I think I failed in that father control role. Mm. 
I was their friend for too long. Mm -hmm. you know, and thank God I had a wife who was they're instilling that they're, they're mm. instilling making sure the controls were put in and everything wow. so she, she did fantastic and i'm always grateful to her you know so god bless her yes I, you, she you, forced me to do the show yeah and, and then she, yeah, yeah she became she became the 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 the, 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 the sharp figure in there she is you yes. you once publicly i mean this is quite sensitive you publicly spoke about the uh, delinquent ways of one of your children mm -hmm. um, how difficult was it for you to come out to speak about it first and foremost and what key learning uh, uh, points have you drawn from this experience that you can share with other parents I mean there are a lot of parents mm -hmm. locked in now yeah. what what did you learn from this experience well I shared the story then you know because um, I know there are many parents who are going through that, mm. you know, and the amazing thing about when I shared my story was the number of people that called with similar problems mm. and how I had helped my son through so I could advise them, well, this is what I did. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You know, so that was I shared it simply because it was a pain. Mm. And I wanted people out there to understand that, hey, like you said in the it beginning, ah, like, case, be case, case, you don't know my cries, mm. you don't know my worries, and there are many we didn't get into. But this was just to let people know that these things happen, mm -hmm. and when they do happen, be there, mm. you know, be there and do the best you can. You know, I'm happy to say that I look back now and I'm glad that we were there, my, me, the mother, everything, mm -hmm. we were all mm -hmm. there and helped, you know, uh, you know. So that was the story. Uh, then that I decided to, you know, and I was amazed the number of people that would respond to it and tell me, Casey, I'm going through the same thing, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what, in your opinion, is the most challenging part of being a parent? I mean, personally, mm. and what values must every parent arm themselves with? I mean, for people like myself who are about to get in mm -hmm. there, I mean, I don't have a kid yet, mm -hmm. but I have plans of getting one mm -hmm. very soon. I mean. What what how should we arm ourselves? Well, I think what I just said, you know, um, they now at this when they are kids, they need they need the mother, they need the father, mm -hmm. not the control freak, yeah, but they need strict guidance. Yes, you know, and especially we should all be aware that now the world has changed. Mm -hmm. It's developed. It has changed everything. So even the thinking of the kids, I call them digital thinking. The way they think, the way they respond to things, the way they process information is so different mm. from the way I did, okay. you know. So I think all parents should step back every moment to try and appreciate mm. what their kids are going through. Mm. Understand it, at the very least, understand it. understanding is saying, very important. Yeah, this is wh why they are coming. So once you understand it, then you are able now to give them feedback and direct them, you know. But it's so important that you understand them you know and um, that's the advice I'll give you, you give, yeah, yeah. thank you so much thank you so much. thank you so so much now since we're speaking about family I have my second surprise for you I have mm. some of your family members on but before we do that kindly put on your headset for me that that's yours great yes oh wow that's yours. yes Revo, when you're doing it. Yes. <laughs> great Okay. Guys, don't forget this is the Y Leaderboard series right here on Y107.9 FM. We have KSM in the building with us uh, talking. Whatever it is that you have for him in terms of questions, kindly send it through with the hashtag Y Leaderboard series on WhatsApp is 0202222073. Now, I have a few people on the line. A few uh, people? Yes, a few people on the line. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't want to introduce them. They're going to introduce themselves, but if you can hear them. Uh, hi, guys. We, we are live on Y107.9 FM. Um, our, our papa is in the building. KSM, kindly go ahead. You might want to introduce yourself, by the way, because he, he's... Oh, what's up, what's up, papa, papa, what's up, papa? I'm the man them call out for Romano, O for Romano, M for Romano, A for... I mean, you know that. Uh, Sorry. A radio, sweet to me, to me, to can you mention it? Like my name is Romano. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Foster hey, Romanos. Foster Romanos. The no, answer that, 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 that. <laughs> uh, My papa, my papa, my papa. You're the man, man. You're the man. <laughs> Foster, how are you, man? I'm great. I'm very well. This, this is a pleasant surprise. This is a pleasant surprise. 
And oh I'm, wow! I, 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 I'm so, I, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't oh. expecting this at all. I think there's another Ago. person on the line. There's another person on the yes, line. Hello. 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 <laughs> Listen, I think he's can knocking. You know, uh, until you you open him, he's not coming. He's knocking. Oh, oh, he said I go. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. But when he oh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy I can hear him now. Um, please, Daddy. Um, I've been calling your line like almost a week now, and when I come and look for you, the house girl says you are asleep. I don't know if you sleep twenty four hours. Please, it's my prepaid no, the prepaid. <laughs> I need, hey, I need to say that. Please, my please. son, how are you, man? <laughs> please, 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 please put the how are you somewhere, please, please. <laughs> please, my sister will tell me to be prepared it, yeah. Hey, Papa G, you have, a, you have abandoned, look at Foster, his face is all good. He can't even go to the baba shop. No, 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 you guys, you don't look for your father, oh. <laughs> not true, not true, Charlie. Uh, now nah, become a man, so you guys are you, 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 guys are <laughs> Part of the biggest faces in Ghana's comedy industry. I mean, you guys have done it all. And before you were figures like KSM, he's right here with us. I mean, uh, deep inside, what kind of person is he to you? Um, what have you learned from him so far? I mean, when we mention KSM, what comes in mind? Okay, so let me be frank with you. Oh, wait, wait, KSM. Ah, why? Ah, you look, look your head and look my head. Who be laughing? Can you guys support yourselves? Can you guys support yourselves? But look at my head. I'm the headmaster. Today I accept my head is sick. Today I'm accepting it. You are the headmaster. Have you ever seen that the headmaster talks before the assistant headmaster? Foster. Foster. Uh, yeah. My my foster and Casa Mati. My name Casa. Odi my name Fa. I know, but yeah, they be our professor or this sign. We don't want to sign it. Kafra. I don't want to sign it. We don't want to sign it. <laughs> Don't leave me! <laughs> oh, Charlie, well, let, let me let me say this today. Uh, KSM mm. is is more than a father, and one of the things I really like and love about him is the fact that he he will always encourage and motivate you. He is always available. Once you you go to him, KSM will tell you, "Oh, do it this way, do it that way." And he, he will let you know that, yo, this thing you did, it, it, it blew me away. Like, how did you do it? You are awesome. And that's one thing I love. And I learned my, my uh, what do you call my satirical side of my comedy career from him. I mean, truth be said, he's the first person who, who I saw doing, you know, something satire, trying to pick up on, you know, political issues and it's, it's one of the things I've learned from him and the fact that his doors are always open. He will come to any show you invite him to. I just will you know. But on quad, yeah, he will make sure he comes. And you will not come and, you know, bomb the SME and brap and you if you had an hour reserve, you have a no, 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 no. He is always there to support, stand in ovation. I don't hear joke inside, yeah. <laughs> I remember there was a time I did a joke. Uh, he was seated in front, and I said, It's not easy to do a joke with the king of comedy seated at the front seat. King of comedy, up at the king. And I just ran away. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I've always inspired him. Mm. And from to today, I still watch his videos mm. that I have just to learn one or two. And yeah, I, I'm very, I think I was in his office one time. We had a very, very, you know, heart to heart talk. And it was very awesome. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, this is the little, the rest of that, right? We'll leave it for later. I write them. <laughs> uh, sure. Let the let you time for us to come in. Oh, daddy, God really bless you. Hello, boy. Hello. What's the real script? <laughs> Please uh, use the plan B. 
Flavio. Any 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 Yabako Zungo, Allah. Hey, Allah, yes, we are Rob Yabak. Who strike yes, and Yabako was to Molai. And I'm script to a script to a new one. That's the wrong script, please. That's the wrong script. See, to be frank, let me tell you something. TSM is the first person who gave hope to Ghana comedy, to the fact that comedy. Stand up comedy is possible with a Ghanaian. Mm. At the time when Chapa House had totally was destroying Ghana comedy just so they can continue bringing Nigerian comedy. You know me, I have that, I'll say everything, I'll put the facts right. Mm. When Chapa House was destroying us and there was no hero for Ghana comedy, there was no hero, zero. Mm. These people were just having a goal, they were having a field day, making people believe that it's not possible with Ghana comedians. But TSM was that only person that made us feel within that, ah, it's possible for a Ghanaian. And then he became an inspiration to us and he supported. Anybody listening who thinks, oh, he's a big fan of Ghana comedians, oh boy, the biggest fan of Ghana comedians is, is sitting in the studio right now. Mm. This man patronizes every single show of ours, even to the point where we did a show in Tamale. Guess who was the special guest we saw appear at the place? Okay. Yes. I forgot when that. Wow. <laughs> wow. All the way to Mali. He followed up there. Um, oh, first of all, what was the name of the hall there? Radak, Radak. Radak Hotel, yes. Kirsten was there. And he, he was full support. And look, once Kirsten appeared, the morale was, 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 was off, off, off the roof. It's like... It's like a, how do you call it? I see you they are appearing in front of NBC Food Project. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a wild one. <laughs> Did I tell you? No, no. Furthermore, a lot of people keep bragging that they were the first to do Apollo in Ghana. You know, Sarkozy was like, he's the first among the young age to do Apollo. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashanti I, I, I came out to say they were the first to do Apollo. The, the first original Ghanaian to do Apollo is Kirsten. Ask him. Mm. Wow. First than uh, we, we, we know they talk say he get Apollo first, so we oh, talk say he no, is. Uh, Apollo theater. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah. Apollo theater. We don't want to stop. You, you brothers should cool down. I, I, I've been in America so many times. What's wrong with you? <laughs> man, shut up, man. Padam America now, call you Kawalu too. And look, and 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 to be frank, um, when I did my one man show, point of view, Kesha mm -hmm. was the inspiration behind it mm. because. Uh, you make one man show look so easy. Like, ah, you started to perform one hour. This man will just be doing it every year. Let's try to say that. See what? It took me almost 10 years to prepare for it. But he was a special because I, I felt moved that, okay, Charlie, if I'm able to do it, you know, uh, uh, if I'm able to, it, it means that Kiesu yes, has been a good inspiration. And truly, I did it. It was an amazing show. Followed by Foster. I did this one man show. And I don't know why he says the show is incomplete, but meanwhile, the whole place is complete to people. I don't even get it. Like, Foster or Mesa Pobre Kaka. If I don't catch you, if I don't catch you, people. Reverend made that thing. Oh! And, 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 and let me give you another uh, hint. Another this one. is a, a fierce reward, right? Which is um, a, a man dressed up as a woman for comedic purposes. Uh -huh. KSM is the inspiration behind Madame Pelham. Yes, Madame Pelham. And, and <laughs> yes. talking about that, K Eddie KB, if you don't bring yes. that back, I will send my boys to you. <laughs> no, no, no. That was my unemployment days. Right now, I'm being fully employed. The last so. time I saw Madame Pelham <laughs> was in a Yes, Yes, Yes music video, right? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, book, uh, book, book back. back. Colum. Yes, yes, Colum, please yes. bring that back. <laughs> bring no, that some back. of you think Madame Pelham's is good step, and Madame uh, DK is good step. Madame Pelham has nothing called step. She's just uh -huh. wow. <laughs> Charlie, you so like listen, it, uh, Papa K is the father of comedy in Ghana, mm. and he has been the biggest fan, the biggest supporter, the biggest. In fact, he does. Um, He's now meeting with us to forge forward, you know, the whole spirit of comedy. Mm -hmm. That's really, you know, you know, uh, greatness is about somebody else. Uh, greatness is about another great person telling your story. Mm -hmm. It's not even about you telling your story. Mm -hmm. So, me interview now, because we are rough. I hear this one, you're interviewing now. Wow, first time I'm the boy. It's never been a crowd. I'm going to have a blast from your whole story. Oh, Mr. Who, very rough is all. Hey, let me add one more. KSM is also the first to put us on TV. <laughs> Foster, you remember? Charlie! 
We were on a demonstration shoot. They are set to demonstrate me and can come to shoot, but I don't go there. Okay, before that. Um, I think I would have to invite you guys over to the studio one time, so mm. we do this, okay? Um, yeah. I, I, we, yeah. we really need time yeah, to do okay. this, because you guys have a lot to share as well. Yeah. But uh, yes. to catch you guys short, thank you guys so much for sharing your experience with us. I mean, we're here As today. I have cut that short. You have oh, cut that short. Just say it. Hey, uh, for, yeah. cut for the back, yeah. send, you send me your mobile money number, eh? <laughs> yes, uh -huh. uh, Reverend, uh, you don't know what I'm not sure anymore. You don't know what friend or Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't cut these guys, we'll finish. But I mean, that, you that see, was a surprise. That was a surprise. Yeah, thing. you you have you have done it all. I think they they, they make my heart mm. sort of like put it in a very relaxed. Style. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Why be? Maybe mm. you know. And th 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 there was a time when comedy was like dwindling, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden. Mm. And th what I really like most is mm. that most of them are university graduates. Yes. You know, uh, OBs. All, all of them. All of them. Sorry, I'm saying, like, you know, Z, all and of them. And they've discovered that, look, comedy is serious business. Mm -hmm. So, even as university graduates, this is what they want to pursue. So, mm -hmm. if they are all listening, now I'm sure you are, Charlie, they made me very, very proud. Mm. Very, very proud. And uh, maybe they say I support them. It's just because they are doing such great work, and I'm always there, you know, to, to, to back them up. Yeah. Great wow. guys. I'm, I'm very inspired. I won't even lie. I mean, I I have I have I don't know I don't know how bad my sense of humor is, <laughs> but I mean I feel I can crack a few jokes <laughs> if I'm really, I'll, I'll try I'll try that something. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's you that's that's you giving me me vim I like that. <laughs> Guys, it's half past level about thirty minutes to the end of the show. Um, mo moving on, all right. You have blazed the trial for stand up comedy in Ghana. I mean these guys just attested to that fact. Um, what are your thoughts on the pool of talent available now, and what must be done to improve it on an earth more talent oh, yeah. i mean talents in general comedians yeah. musicians i mean uh, playwrights guys i mean everybody mm -hmm. i think uh the first thing i'll say in terms of comedy in ghana is that they are proof mm. that we are making leaps and bounds in comedy mm -hmm. there was a whole era it was chaos mm -hmm. you know whatever it is i do my yearly plays whatever and it was chaos you know but we had a point in our history of comedy development that mm -hmm. yes, several of them. I could name plenty. You just had two great ones on. Mm. There's Obi, there's Lexi, there's a Comedian Wires, there's name it. So that alone should tell Ghanaians that no, if you have moved from an era where it was just one person dominating it, to an era where we have about 20 people mm. that are doing great work, it means that there is progress. Mm. Movement is being made. So um, in terms of comedy, I think we're in the right direction. The advice I'll give them, and I always tell them one by one when I meet them, is fantastic, but keep working on your material. Develop new material. Because for a comedy, the biggest fault that you have is around us mm -hmm. the politics the religion the the everything that we do our behavior is all your material so i keep encouraging them all develop your material man work on it mm. you know and, and, and make sure that you 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 are current mm -hmm. because unfortunately for us we don't have a, such a huge market there's probably a little market that we're all playing in so if the same market hears your jokes four times they'll be oh you know so just improve on your jokes and work more but the future is very very bright you know after we go through past COVID and we get back to real mm -hmm. performances again You'll be amazed what these guys will come up with, you know. Mm, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, we're going to yeah. touch on COVID in a bit, but before we do that, I mean, from the era of local slapstick comedy, I mean, the ones some of us grew up to, I mean, mm. if you grew up in Kumasi, I mean, parts of uh, a crowd, so really loved that back in the days. Um, the people like, names like Waterproof and mm -hmm. Bobokala all mm -hmm. come up, in Komode, uh, 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 Bus Stop, all these guys. You transformed it into proper issue based performances i mean these guys back in the days will come up crack jokes get people laughing but then uh with issues that they make up funny stories that they make up but you were able to transform issues that were quite crucial to all of us and then make us laugh it off and in so doing or by so doing sorry create extra awareness for these things i mean wake people up because after they laugh they're going home they're thinking oh true mm. what you mentioned is actually a point you transform this 
what in your opinion must be the modern comedian's biggest weapon behind uh, 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 their successes on stage i mean there are a lot of comedians now what should they equip themselves with in order to stand out in order to be as successful as you've you, you've been or you are mm -hmm. well the, the the key advice and i i was just mm -hmm. talking about this is that they should really com comedy is amazing you know look at a situation where under normal circumstances people would consider tragic or sad or whatever mm -hmm. and it could be tragic mm -hmm. it could be sad mm -hmm. but the role of the comedian is to look at the same situation mm -hmm. but get people to get a laugh out of it yeah and get people to relax out of it so it is a, a craft that demands a lot of intellectual mm. prowess mm. so my, my 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 advice i give to the comedians stay up on top of the game mm -hmm. you know and don't look for the cheap laughter mm -mm. you know let them laugh but throw in something that that helps them think very very important to me you know because when i come to a show and it's all laughter that's fine but i like those who have that satiric or occasionally intellectual things that probably a little bit mm. to think a little bit it doesn't mean you are not going to become a serious man and talk mm -hmm. serious, serious things, but something in there mm. you know that, that that causes you to think a little bit mm. so that's the advice i'll give them you know they should focus on their craft be funny be whatever you can be but please throw in something we are coming from a very developed country yes. you know so we cannot afford to have laughter just for laugh stick mm -hmm. we need laughter that makes us think mm. that's why some of my favorite comedians outside of ghana uh what's his name um trevor trevor <laughs> thank you trevor noah trevor is deep yeah he's and south, funny from but south the man africa is deep yes he touches on issues that issues. with trump yes he, i think he's he's one of trump's least favorite yes <laughs> not one of them well, possibly the, 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 most. Noah, the most wow chris rock yes very very deep mm. um this guy who smokes a lot cry what's his name um what's the name man la, 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 la something uh. well he came to Africa for some stand -up. Yeah, but I'm talking about comedians like this, you know, they'll make Dave you... Chappelle. Thank you. Yes, Dave Chappelle. Thank you. Dave Chappelle. When you said smokes a lot, that, that was like, that's even, that has to be Dave. Dave Chappelle. Uh -huh. Very, very funny. Mm. But Charlie, the guy gets you to think. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling my fellow comedians, there's so much to think about in mm. Ghana. So much to think about in Ghana. So go and don't be afraid. Mm what should they bear in mind when it comes to the business aspect of it because i mean uh, in as much as it's a craft that yeah. the, the, the it, well it requires a lot of passion i mean it's something you must love to do but yeah. your pockets must must not bleed yes how have you been able to go through it what should they look out for what should they do when it comes to brands i mean a lot of them i've met have complained about the fact that brands don't really want to throw in money when it comes to comedy and yeah. that how what should they do in order to be uh, bankable i mean yeah. Yeah. brands that can bring in money that's that's an excellent question man how did they become and the word you use there is bankable, the word bankable. yeah you know a, 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 an investor whatever mm -hmm. i can say I want let, to me, put let me put my money on this it's bankable mm. unfortunately that's not their fault but we haven't grown that investment culture yet mm -hmm. that includes the appreciation of comedy and mm -hmm. the arts in general mm. you know we haven't done that yet especially with comedy so that's the the angle it's not their fault mm. so i would advise them you keep on your craft keep doing what you're doing yeah. but don't wait and count for somebody coming to throw in money mm. to you now that time somehow doesn't come yet unfortunately for my fellow comedians too ghana is not a very polarized state we are so partisan and polarized that if you're a, if you're a comedian mm -hmm. you want to do some amazing funny joke on a kufuado Ah, where and this thing, and vice versa. Look at what Obi went through. Yes, because he cracked a joke on yes, Mahama. Yes. Uh, you know, so mm. that is the mm. my, my fellow comedians. That's the country you're living in now. Mm. It's polarized. Mm. It's partisan. So you now have the duty to how do you weave yourself through this? And what is sad about this revo is that it imposes self censorship on, on the yes. art of comedy. Yes, you can't really you can't really say yourself. what you want because yes. they'll brand you. Mm. But that's not, and things have changed so much. Charlie, when I was doing politically incorrect, the first one, Charlie, JJ was in the house. I gave it to JJ. I gave it to him, and they were all cheering, including mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. To this time, 
Who are you? Who born dog to go and give it to a president? They won't understand that, you know. So th I think the country has gone to the point where it's now very polarized. Are we, are we losing our sense of humor we are. as a nation? We are. Mm. We have become too partisan. We have lost, not we are, lo are we losing all. We have lost our sense of humor. Mm. I can't crack a joke about the president. We all laugh because it's a joke. Mm. And I can't crack a joke about Mahama and we all laugh because it's a joke. No. It must be partisan. Mm. You must, it is sad. Mm. It is killing our industry. Mm. You know. So we have now to find a way to manage it. I was telling Obi the other time when he cracked the joke. And this is not something <laughs> I should be telling Obi yeah. as a senior committee. I said, tell Obi, Ghana, there, Charlie, yeah, come, come, come with some political balance, you know. Mm. If you're going to joke about Mahama, joke about like an arm too small, it yeah. shouldn't be the case. Mm. But that's where we are. Mm, no. And that's our biggest challenge is we are living in a partisan uh, country now and our freedom of thought has now gone into self-censorship. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. Do you think this is going to change? I think it will. It will. It will. It has to change. Mm. And the only way it, it would change is we in the comedy front, entertainment front, should keep doing and expressing what we believe is fun, let them insult, let them do everything, but eventually mm. they're going to understand going to get that. Used to it. We I mean, didn't mean you, any harm. you mentioned that we need to keep the balance in there as well. The neutrality, and not yes. neutrality, I mean, balance it on Balance side. it. Don't balance let it look one sided. I mean, I'm sure when Trevor started, he had his, you know, attacks as well. But I mean, <laughs> now sure. they know that he's not doing it because he wants to attack him, yeah. because he wants to make something funny out of what yes. is. Yes. I mean, that's a fair point, too. And, and the one thing, advice I give them to us mm -hmm. is listen, if you're a comedian, and you're making a joke about somebody mm -hmm. and everybody laughs except that person you have failed wow your joke should be so sharp that he and so important that he or she too has to laugh <laughs> <laughs> you know so we have to get to that ability uh -huh. where we can make people laugh at ourselves uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then would have gone a step higher wow yes sir well said well said i mean you've <laughs> dropped volumes of knowledge on this you mentioned industry i mean it quickly drew my attention to one thing that i wanted to ask um uh, Quite a number of industry players have called for support for the creative arts industry. I mean, for your, uh, from your experience on the local scene, what form of support, in your opinion, is needed for the creative arts industry? I mean, there's a whole ministry for that. Uh, what support do you really need on the ground? I think the support we really need on the ground is support for each other. Mm. You know, I think we as entrepreneurs of creativity must be down there and we should be working. I admire Shelley from Fort Manso a mm -hmm. lot. Do you think if somebody comes and wants to give Shelley from Fort Manso money, she wouldn't take it? She would. She would. Mm. But in the meantime, she's working. Mm. She's, she's not, creating. She's not sitting there waiting. She's not sitting there waiting. Mm. And that's the advice I'll give to all of us. Mm. Please not sit down. Let's not sit down and wait for any government handouts. Mm -hmm. If it comes, great. But until then, that's why we call creative people. Mm -hmm. Let us create. And when we get to a certain level, they will come running with their money and tell you, this one, they want to put this money what I want in to put in there. You know, but I think for the government side, what I should tell them to do, that in the meantime, if you're not going to be able to give money to and support the whole creative world, pick winners. Mm. And what do I mean by picking winners? There are some people who are bankable. Mm. Mm. Back to the bankable. Back to the bankable. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with Shelley. Mm. You can't go wrong with a uh, Foster, OB. These are people who have been drawing crowds. They are bankable. Yes. Lexi. Can I say they are structured? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, anybody that mm -hmm. wants to support, if, let's say, KSM wants to support people on the streets doing comedy, KSM wants to see someone who mm -hmm. has proof of how mm -hmm. much they can invest into the field if they are invested into. I mean, if I give him 1,000 Ghana cities, I should know that, okay, he's able to pay for this and pay for that. There are receipts. The last time he did this, this is yes. how much he got. Yes. I mean, the structures come Definitely. In. And uh, what you mentioned is very, very important because if we can't support all, at least the structured ones should be supported. Thank you. That itself will motivate the Thank ones you. who are in there, who are not Thank structured, yes. to learn from structures so mm -hmm. that when the cake mm -hmm. becomes so big, I'm that so glad share. that you have introduced structures. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm saying pick winners. Mm. What make them winners? Because they have a structure. Mm. They have a, some accounting system. They mm. have some track record. Mm. You know. So when they pick you, they know they are picking somebody with a track record. That's true. So for now, the government should concentrate and pick winners. Maybe two from TV, two from so so, and then fund them yeah. with specific terms of reference. Mm -hmm. Make sure you deliver this. Make sure you do this, and gradually we can start going from there. I I was well. 
we we cannot be here. I mean, I'm lost for words now. We can't be here and not talk about uh, your acting your acting career and movies in 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 Ghana. I mean, I'm not going to talk about you personally, but generally, what do you think about our movie industry now? The movie industry is really struggling. I think you mentioned the word structures. Mm -hmm. As a as a, as an industry, we do not have the structures. Mm. You know, so I've said some place and I got a lot of flag for it. I say what we have in Ghana is not a film industry. We might have some very dynamic directors and we do have we do have not that we may. We have dynamic you know, we have dynamic uh, directors of photography, mm. dynamic editors, you know, but you know what I was telling them? I said, Listen, you may have all the ingredients mm. but you still need to develop the recipe. You know, if you are making a bank quiet, just don't throw anything. You start with this, you go to that, yeah. you know. So we don't have the recipe. We have all the ingredients. We have film directors, we mm -hmm. have cameramen, mm -hmm. we have cinematographers, we have everything. Those are the ingredients that we have. But the recipe of having a structure so that there's a, a particular way of writing, the skill, mm -hmm. the acting, the, everything, we lack the recipe, but we have the ingredients. Yeah, and, and just as I asked about the, the, the comedy industry, do you think there's hope? Are we going to bounce back soon? With a film? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to bounce back. We're going to come up with the ways to bounce back. Mm -hmm. We have to. You know, the, 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 we have to come back with this to bounce back. Even if you're all going to have films wearing a mask and whatever. But I think, I think there'll be a bounce back. There'll this be has been back, right? a major setback, mm. but it has not. Mm. Uh, that comes to say, Achia, but it's not. 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 Achia, 15 minutes to the top of the hour. Um, I'm super excited, honestly. I wish I wish we could get an extra hour for this. There are a lot of things to talk about. Uh, before we get back, though, uh, A.D. Kavinci is watching us on Facebook. Um, says Charlie, fire emoji. Stanley Asenso is also locked in. Uh, big ups going out to my big bro, Timothy Kakari. Atikapa Adolphus is also watching. Um, Emmanuel Usu Amuatin. Kojomano, our very own Kojomano, host of the drive of your life. And uh, Prophet Bernardo Usu and of Kami, uh, charismatic anointed vibe ministries is also watching uh here is kekeli Clenam jacobson is also watching as well guys if you're locked in what's up line is 0202 don't forget in about five minutes i'll be taking two questions from you at home i mean if you're locked in now you have a question for ksm feel free send it through um what legacy would you want ksm to be remembered for i mean five years ten years to come if we mention ksm what would you be know uh, what would you want to be known for the legacy Legacy is having left the youth of Ghana. I think the youth of Ghana is my, I call it my national service. Mm -hmm. Since I didn't do national service in Ghana, the youth of Ghana is my national service. I, as much as possible, want to impart knowledge to the youth. I really want them to radically, mm -hmm. radically change their mindsets. And I want them to adapt more positive mm -hmm demeanor towards things that they do mm -hmm. because like you said in the opening majority of them are the youth yes majority of of you guys listening to me you are the youth mm. so you can imagine how if you have your 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 energies coordinated mm -hmm. and fixed and focused mm. the amount of difference you can make you know so that's all i'm trying to do you know that uh, at some point when I depart, I can be say at least mm. I was able to influence the youth of Ghana in their thinking and in and, and, and whatever they want to do. So the first is, shout out to my brother Joel, the first is for the youth. You yes, guess, yes. Say, yeah, for okay. the youth. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I, I mean, for the majority listening right now who have a dire interest in going outside, I mean, going to a tree in search of greener pastures uh, what is your advice to them i mean there are people who still oh, there are people yes. who still want to leave ghana yes. i mean i talked to friends yesterday i met a friend of mine at the car wash he was like rev mean to mean train my body's name he's willing to sell his car and Don't leave move. yeah yeah what is your advice to them is there oh. is there really green pastures on the other side like they say if you go there and you are very 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 determined you are very focused and you have the right frame of mind, yes. But interestingly, if you happen not to go mm. and you still have the same features of being determined, focused, and drive, you still have a chance in Ghana. 
But the fact is this, over there they have certain structures that you can tap into mm. that are missing here. Mm. You know, people as we speak now, people are crossing the Sahara. Yes. People are still doing this and they're not doing this because they want to walk in the desert. They're doing this because they have a need to fulfill a certain mm -hmm. level of living. They want to survive. Mm -hmm. And it's like, at any cost, I am going to get it. Mm. So can you imagine if we get to the point where, as a country, we start catering for our people and opening doors mm -hmm. and giving them the support? They won't go. Mm. They have to go because they can't get it. Mm. So I will just say that, yes, I won't sit here and judge them and say, no, but I'm going to say that when you get there too, you'll be surprised that you don't have the vision, the focus, and the persistence, and the support, you will be so sad and regret that you ever made that journey. Your family members will be minded. <laughs> they I mean, now, now that everybody, ha they, they, they have their lives. They have it's, their lives. It's not like Ghana no, 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 where, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, if you mm -hmm. if you find yourself at a dental, you can go to your auntie's friend's house mm -hmm. and say, I mean, call baby now, I did ask Sammy, so I'm sleeping over. No, 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 no. It's no, not no. done. Well, that's why I was in the train. Yeah. You know, I don't have family in the yeah. U.S. But I mean, that train, it, it, <laughs> Checking the distance. I mean, you 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 had a, a long uh, sleep, but then it wasn't a comfortable one. It wasn't a comfortable one. You, you had you've had the opportunity of interviewing a lot of people on uh, Thank God It's Friday show, mm -hmm. which I mean I must commend you on that. It's one of my favorite shows, one of the longest standing TV shows, uh, yeah. talk shows yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 the it's the marking scheme when it comes to talk shows out here in Ghana. I won't even lie about that. Um, can you recall your most memorable interview? Um, one that well altered your, your your view on your career as a tv a tv host as a mm -hmm. as an interviewer one that really changed your mind i think two two okay the one that i did with farida bedway and her mom and farida is this lady who has cerebral palsy very smart she's into it and everything farida is she's quite well known and she came on the show with her mom because when I invited her, she says, if it wasn't for her mother, she wouldn't be where she mm. was. So the mom and Farida came on the show, and their story for me mm. is the most captivating to date. Mm. So captivating, and I learned a lot from that story. You know, that was the earlier uh, TJF, you know. Yeah. The latest, I think, I was really, really, really impressed with the recent one I did with um, Charlotte Ose. Yeah, Auntie Charlotte Ose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I was like amazed, you know, because where I was expecting it to come from, she swerved, you know, mm. she's still very open, mm. very gentle, and does not allow negativity to get to her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's very focused, you know. Mm -hmm. So these two interviews, for the Budwe and Mom, she'll just say, I think, fantastic. Where, where the but at this point, before I forget anything, mm -hmm. let me give a big up to the man who inspired all this. Wow. The man who inspired the KSM show. Okay. Folks, I'm sure many do know him. Mike Egan. Wow. Mike Egan. When I was a kid, I was watching Mike Egan doing the Mike Egan show, and that's when I said, one day, I'll do something like this. Hmm. And to date, Revo, I'll be 64 in December. How many? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 70 soon, 70 I'll soon. I'll be 64 in December. Yeah. To date, Mike Egan will text me if he thinks I've swayed too often. Wow. And, and, and correct certain things. And when he thinks it's great, he'll send a text, oh, that was fantastic. Or I don't wow. think you should have been wearing this shoe. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he goes that far? Oh, wow. well, not, not petty. No, well, but yeah, goes, yeah. yeah, you know. So, Mike Egan, if you're listening, mm. big ups to you. Mike Egan is the reason for the cakes and shoe success on TV. I thought I had to put that in. No, no, no that's great. It's good. I mean, great men <laughs> appreciate great men who have been great to them. So, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. God bless Mike Egan for this. You've brought laughter into the homes of almost every Ghanaian on television. Um, I want to find out what brings joy and relaxation to you i mean we know that this is your job i know it's fun but yeah. uh, aside all these things you do for us what do you do for what makes you happy and, and relaxes you during your free time i mean yeah. what do you do for yourself it's funny because um my wife mavis she used to work for the world bank for a long time she's mm. now a consultant and when you see her demeanor she's very corporate and proper mm -hmm. 
But I'm telling you, she's one of the hilarious comedians. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she's the comedian's comedian. Charlie, she, she would throw something wow. out and, and just leave it. I said, Charlie, I'll use it in the show. Sometimes she'll be in the show and say, ah, that's my line, but I said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where the inspiration is from. So, okay, yeah, okay, so she, okay. she, she, she keeps me relaxed, keeps me focused, you know, and um, gives me jokes, you mm. know. So for those of you who know her, this corporate, <laughs> straight to man, well bank, mm. Harvard graduate, la, la, la. Hello. Mm. Concert, well. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on the concert side, all. Wow. Yeah. wow, 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 wow. That's, yeah. that's good. I mean, I've learned so much from this interview today. Final set of words I want to find from you. I mean, what advice would you give to young, budding, creative minds who are trying to toe that thin line between following their dreams and making ends meet? Yeah, very, very difficult one. Mm. You know, if you're creative. Um, it's very, 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 very difficult to make ends meet sometimes. Mm. You have to reach a certain level. Mm. I like your word. Where you become bankable. Bankable. <laughs> <laughs> where you become bankable. <laughs> but until then, mm. I think the only edge you have is to create something new. Mm. Come up with things people haven't thought of before. Mm. And do it in a way that excites people. Mm. Especially creatives. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've always said that the word creativity should not only be limited to those of us in the creative arts. We need creativity from doctors, mm -hmm. from architects, from pharmacists, yep. from all everybody. Yeah. You know, which is, I think, something that we don't understand as a people. We think creativity is meant for the arts. Mm. But if you are in the arts as a profession, mm. your best bet is to deliver something new that mm. people will talk about mm. because it's different. And once you establish something like that, whether it's painting, whether it's poetry, whether it's this guy who came to do this magnificent thing here, whatever, something level of it that people will talk about, create conversation points, and people will start paying attention to you. Wow. So that's the advice I'll give to now you. Now that you've drawn my attention to that, <laughs> was that a modem you were holding? Which one? Was it Bibisha was him? Phone. <laughs> <laughs> You have to pose with a phone. Wow. <laughs> a phone. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, kid. Uh, before I let I let I let you go, um, hello Uncle KSM. It's really uh, good that you are the guest for today. It's coming from Araba Ade on Twitter. My question is, how do you get into character when you're about to perform or performing? Mm, I spent time backstage. Mm. Uh, what's the name? Adele or Araba? Uh, Araba Ade. Araba Ade. Yeah. I spent the time backstage, you know. All the time they are playing the music and mm. there are all these acts on the screen mm. before I come. I'm locked in my private room in the state theatre and I'm concentrating, meditating, mm. warming up like a boxer. Okay. Like, pam, 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 pam. <laughs> you know, because I have to build some energy. Uh -huh. And that's how I you get, get into the state of mind before I go on a performance. I mean, we don't have all that space in here. It's not a private room but um, we really beg of you to give us a line or two from a fiastre boy I mean let's 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 feel the a fiastre boy in the building right and we've been talking to KSM for a long time I want to hear a fiastre boy for a few minutes oh my goodness I wish you had told me then I would really get into character like everybody's asking I would have prepared and for that dazzled you but yeah. right now if I do it I won't dazzle you, you so I won't do it <laughs> So, uh, no, 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 so you since we are wrapping up all right mm. i remember when i used to watch ksm or in the beginning there was a way you you signed out we are out, out of, of here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kenzo, for joining Thank us. Thank you, why too, man. Revo. It's been an experience. Revo, you should be my guest. So you didn't make I a will. promise for me, have you? Have so you? I promise, I <laughs> promise the listeners, if you're locked in now, I'm going to be on the KSM show sometime very soon. Yes. We will communicate the date out, but I'm on there. I need to tell my story as well. We're going to have fun. I mean, if you enjoy this interview, you want the part two of it. Yes. Join myself and KSM on the KSM show. Coming very, soon. Very soon. Coming soon. To a theater near you. To a theater you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 57 past level, about three minutes to the top of the hour. It's been an awesome experience. Um, to all of you guys that texted in, thank you guys so much for joining us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Every single person that joined us. I mean, the team that put this together. George, Ken, Edwin, Blase, the Lieutenant, DJ Ganj, Utopia, Emma, the entire team, man. Big up going out to you guys. Let's make some quick cash right after that. We wrap up on today's edition of the Good morning, radio show. Congratulations, you found the one station that plays Ghana's best urban music. I like to come up with a song on the radio. Quiet.
FM. Listen to YFM 107.9 Accra, 102.5 Kumasi, and 97.9 in Takarati. 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 Tak